Good day to you my fellow Endo Skeletons, I'm Kenator and welcome back for another Starbase Progress Report. This is week 17 of 2022. I have been wondering whether or not to do another video and I also wanted to spend some time with my corp and see what impact the new patch had on the game and the player base. But due to high demand, I'm back baby. Unlike Lowry, who is still hiding from the community. Or is he? So we know that Lowry has said before they had funding for several years secured for further Starbase development, and he's been gone a little while now, roughly as long as the Russian invasion of Ukraine, which leaves me wondering, could they have had a Russian investor? And has Lowry been mega busy trying to find a replacement for that funding? Purely speculation on my part, but I'm still puzzled as to why he couldn't or wouldn't still interact with the community as he has done for two years now. But for now, it's unknown when Starbase may get back to full Steam mode in development, or even if it has a future at all. Frozen might have no other announced upcoming games, and games take a significant amount of time to produce, so new funding would be years away without an external source. So my biggest advice to everyone is just enjoy what we have been given. It's not perfect, but there is lots to do for both new and old players. Now to the update. It may have been a tad earlier than the devs originally planned, but here we are. The big update. Moon mining and capital ships are now with us. A bit of a rocky start with moon mining not actually working on the first patch day, but this is now fixed. However, be warned right now the moon mining can be hugely performance heavy, leading to massive frame drops and low FPS, and the hover mode will try and kill you every single time. But don't let that stop you, there is many a treasure to be had in the surface of the moons. And the player base has definitely seen an uptick in active players, as many have pointed out via the Steam Charts page. But please don't take these numbers as gospel, this only shows concurrent players for one, and concurrency is not the same as player population. Only Frozen White really knows the size of the active player base, so let's stop holding this site up as an example of good or bad things, other than a general trend. And for now, that trend is going back up. A max of 500 players at peak, for example, could still be 1,000 or 2,000 people spread all over the world over the course of a day. Now let's dive into what this patch has changed, because it's a big one. So where to start? Well, probably the most important is moon mining, because this is where the newest ores are, namely Zalium, which is needed for capital ship components. And while this is rare, it has higher concentrations in the moon craters that were added, and these can easily be seen from the orbit of the moon. To support your mining operations, you can now build moon bases on the surface of the moon too. Moon bases are a little different than stations, and need support pillars under them. Spread out every 9 to 18 blocks, depending on your design, as each pillar can support a radius of 9 blocks. The safe zone area that comes with these bases will also negate gravity, so your ship should be reasonably safe inside. But want something safer? Well, now you can build ship hangars. These can store your ships just like despawning them at Origin. Not only that, they will also double as a ship designer and a repair hall. And these can be placed on moon bases, space stations and capital ships. Oh yes, capital ships. I know you want one. But first, you're going to need alloys. You can get these by making a new alloy furnace, slapping in a fuel rod and allowing it to charge up. You can place these on ships or stations, and will allow crafting of different alloys depending on which environment you're in. But specifically for capital ships, the outer armour blocks need to be made in the moon belt, and the alloy for the frames is done in the EOS belt, where the origin stations are. The alloy allium, which is made in the moon belt, is also required for building the capital ship dock. Now this dock is similar to the ship storage hall and the factory hall, but must be built in a completely empty, freshly expanded zone on your station to work. Once complete and inside of the hall, you'll get a pop-up to start a new capital ship, and you can then start placing parts to build your new capital. Once warped outside of this hall, you can then work on expanding to a larger capital ship, and it will gain its own inventory just like a station. One thing to note here is that many of the planned limitations for civilian capital ships did not make it into this patch, so these currently can enter the belt. It's my belief that this wasn't finished yet, but the devs wanted to give us as much to play with as possible since the break in development is for an unknown length of time. Even the types of ores needed for capital ships have been greatly nerfed. 
So to move your capital ship, you're also going to need to create a ship with a navigation data logger. This uses special chips, some power and some time to work. And by having one of these saved chips in your inventory, your capital ship can use it as a destination to lock in and do a warp jump. And having one of these long range ships to travel to other moons is how you'll get ships and resources to them. Just don't forget to save a chip for the return journey beforehand or you will be stranded out there. And speaking of ships, they have had a whole host of updates. New materials and alloys can enable the use of new weapons like the rail cannon, new armor materials, higher tier enhancers can be built as well as professional YOLO chips. Manual worlds also made it into the game to allow bridging of small gaps in beamwork. The new blueprint system can now save the edits you do to your ship, so if you bring back damaged ship back to origin or your own ship dock, these changes to the ship can now be restored and not removed when running a repair. We have many new devices too. The speedometer gives you your speed. This requires a stable frame rate to get a stable readout however, so be aware of that otherwise it will be even more inaccurate than player made GPS system speed estimates. The gyroscope is another device, and well it's not really a gyroscope for turning your ship. Instead you can save a specific orientation and it will give you measurements from that orientation. There is also a new grid display that has more features to it than I can count, everything from scaling text, layers, colour options, you can move text, it's basically a coder's wet dream. And I've already seen some very impressive stuff done with it. A laser tracker and laser designator have been added. These work just like how the old designator for torpedoes and the tracking for torpedo heads work, but can be more freely used for other weapon systems. Ships now have access to large generators. These are big bulky machines, but you will find them to be much more efficient for heat and exorium use than standard generators and far, far quicker to refuel. So if you have a large high energy usage ship or just want a long operating time, these gins are for you. Lastly, ammo containers for the ship can now pipe new ammo to your weapons, solving the problem of ships lasting longer than their ammo reserves strapped to the gun. The missing tripod weapons have also been rolled out and so you can now get tripod mounted laser, plasma and rail cannons. Not only that, a new type of rocket launcher was added, only housing 5 rockets but far more compact. Also single piece rockets and torpedoes have been added. And of course there's the new heat mechanics. The reason the ship shops are mostly out of action due to a lack of updates to them. But don't worry, your trusty friends at Kbots have got you covered here, with nearly every ship updated for heat. The new heat mechanics have been tested for some time on the PTU and are pretty solid. There is extensive information about them on the wiki and the new fields on generators make it easy to check where things are going wrong in your setups. Not only that, it means that weapons can now also be actively called, allowing for longer bursts should you need them, or much shorter bursts if you fail to manage the heat source. I was writing a video on these new heat mechanics when we got the news about the development change and I kind of put it on pause. But if you still want to see this, do let me know in the comments. Old chip parts can now be recycled back into ore with the new recycle tool, but at a less than perfect rate. So if you don't want to reuse a part, you can at least reclaim some of the ore used to make it. With all these new features, you might end up dying at some point, be it pirates or your ship imploding due to gravity. To avoid the long trip back to wherever you were, you can now put a station reconstruction machine on your stations and capital ships. These have a whopping 5000 km range, but will still need to be powered by large gens on your stations. They are not made to go in the factory halls, but are part of the station itself. We also have changes to the whole game world. Every moon and moon belt now has ore to be mined from it. An auction house was added to the moon city, and the moon city's safe zone and that of the gate leading to it were reduced so much that there is now a dangerous gap to cross. Make sure you bring friends and bring weapons. A new fast travel gate from the moon to the far side of the belt was added to reach the new dev station, imaginatively called Far Belt Outpost. The huge robo combat area station that was seen in closed alpha was added to just outside the safe zone behind the origin ringle. This station has no safe zone and can be used as a destination for duels or just any old PvP fighting, be it ships or on foot with small arms. The tech tree received a major overhaul with a huge cost reduction. You can also now unlock multiple levels of research with one click, and the game will simply show you the total of cost of researching down to that point. 
Of course, many of these new features require new resource, so be sure to check out your trees for the good stuff. We've also had the removal of the warp gate core. This is no longer needed on any ship to traverse the gate. It is now an expensive paperweight. So you can feel free to take them off your ships, but just be careful your ship wasn't balanced to have it included, since not being there will shift your center of mass on your ship. Asteroids everywhere were reseeded, but this time with a much higher proportion of larger size 9 and 10 asteroids, which would make collecting ore a lot easier, and allow you a bit more wiggle room to maybe go out and try some PvP without having to lose too much since it's all now easily replaced. In terms of stations and capital ship decoration, we've been given a whole host of new parts to make them look great, from panelling to lights to station walkways. So if you haven't jumped in in a long time, there is loads to sink your teeth into. No more research grind, no more resources grind, there's moons to visit, people to fight. Come back now and have a great time and interact with other people. Now is the time. Let's not let the game die off just when it's getting started. So tell me friends, would you like to see a capital ship design competition? Would you even enter? If so, let me know in the comments, as always, along with any questions you might have and I'll do my best to answer them. Don't forget to subscribe, join the Discord, like the video, and all that good stuff. And until next time, Kenator, out.